Hi there. Now, in this video, what I want to do is show you how we go about finding the equation for a tangent and a normal to a parametric curve at a given point. And to demonstrate this, I've got this example here where we've got the curve, the parametric curve, where we've got x equals t squared, y equals t cubed minus t. And we've got to find the tangent and normal at the point 4 minus 6. Now, in order to do this, you don't have to do this, but I think it's a good idea just to draw some kind of sketch. Okay, so what I'll do is just create some axes here, y and x, and we've got our point at 4 minus 6. 4 across, 6 down. We'll just say it's that point there, 4 minus 6. Now, it could be that the curve is difficult to sketch. Don't let that worry you. Just draw some squiggly line, say, passing through that point 4 minus 6. All I want to do is just demonstrate what's going to happen. We're trying to find the equation of the tangent then at that point. So we've got a line, say, looking something like that. And a normal also at that point. Now when it comes to working out the equation of a line, in this case the tangent and the normal, we can either use y equals mx plus c, but better still y minus y1 equals m, bracket x minus x1. We've got a point on the lines, 4 minus 6, so we've got our x1, y1. What we need though is the gradient. The gradient m. And to get that gradient, we've got to find dy by dx. Now I'm often asked, why can't we try and get the Cartesian equation from these parametric equations and then find dy by dx. Well, quite often it's difficult to get the Cartesian equation and it's unnecessary. The way that we do this is to use the chain rule. We should know that dy by dx through the chain rule would be the same as dy by some parameter which we'll pick up on as t here. So that's dy by dt times dt by dx. Or you could use an equivalent statement which works well for problems like this, and that is dy by dt divided by dx by dt. It's up to you which one you use. It'll give you exactly the same answer. So. In order to get dy by dx then, we need to get dy by dt and dx by dt. So let's start with dx by dt. So dx by dt, if we differentiate t squared then, with respect to t, we'll get 2t. And for dy by dt, if we differentiate t cubed minus t with respect to t, we get 3t squared then minus 1. So therefore, when it comes to working out dy by dx, if we pick up on this result here, dy by dt, that would be 3 t squared minus 1, and that will be divided by dx by dt, which will be 2t. If you had used this result here, you'd have had 3 t squared minus 1 multiplied by the reciprocal of 2t. That would have been 1 over 2t. It would have still given you this result. Now we've got dy by dx, though, in terms of t. And we haven't got a value for t at the moment. We need to find the value of t at this point. So in order to do that, what we need to do is take one of these equations. And it's preferably easier to take the simpler of the two. And in this case, it's this one here, x equals t squared. It's got less t's in, if you like, compared to this one. And what I'm going to do is set x equal to 4 and find out what the value of t would be. So come down here then, and we'll just say that when x equals 4, we know that 4 will be equal to t squared. And from this, it follows that t will be equal to the square root of 4, which is not just 2, but plus or minus 2. So the question is, we've got two values of t here. Which one is the value of t that gives us this point? 
Well, what we need to check out is whether we get the y coordinate of minus 6 when t equals 2 or when it equals minus 2. So let's just say then when t equals 2, substitute it in for y in this equation here. So we've got y would equal 2 cubed minus 2. In other words, 8 minus 2, which is 6. And so clearly it's not 2. We want minus 6 for y, not 6. Don't jump to the conclusion that it's going to be minus 2. You never know. You could have made a mistake up here. So do check this out. So when t equals minus 2, we've got y equals minus 2 all cubed minus minus 2. So we've got negative 8 plus 2, which is minus 6. So clearly we can see that therefore t must be equal to minus 2 at the point for minus 6. So now we're in a position to work out the gradient of the tangent just by substituting t equals minus 2 in here. So when t equals minus 2, we can get dy by dx, the gradient then m of the tangent. So dy dx will equal 3 times minus 2, all squared minus 1, all divided by 2 times minus 2. And if you work this out, we get 11 on the top, minus 4 on the bottom, so we've got minus 11 over 4. So using the form of a straight line, y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1, taking x1 to be 4, y1 to be minus 6, the gradient m to be minus 11 over 4, we can get the equation of the tangent. So we end up with the equation of the tangent being this, and then if I multiply through by 4 and rearrange it, I get this form. It's up to you which form you give. I've gone for the form ax plus by plus c equals 0, where a, b and c would be integers. Now that we've got the gradient as well for the tangent, we know that the gradient of the normal would be the negative reciprocal of this. It would be 4 elevenths. And we can apply the same form for the equation of a line and get the equation of a normal. So we've got the gradient of the normal then is 4 elevenths. And the equation of the normal is going to be this, using y minus y1 equals the gradient times x minus x1. Multiply this time through by 11, rearrange, and you get this form again. So I hope that's given you some idea on how to do this. Now I did start off by saying just draw a sketch to get an idea of what's going on. In fact, the actual sketch looks like this. I leave it to you to just check it out, assuming that you've seen my tutorials on sketching parametric curves. So we've got our equation of our tangent at 4 minus 6 and the equation of the normal. And this is the point then where t equaled minus 2. Okay?